You may remember from our video on data protection definitions that we very briefly mentioned data processors. And in this video, I'm going to expand on that definition further and firstly talk about what a data processor is and how you can identify one. And secondly, what's required between the school and the data processor if you're going to use one. So what is a data processor? Well, a data processor processes data on behalf of a controller. And we know that the school is the data controller and the data processor as a school, you're asking it to process data on your behalf. So in doing so, you're telling the data processor what to process, how to process it, how long to retain that data for. And crucially, the one that really helps you differentiate the difference between a controller and a processor is, the data processor doesn't actually have any need for that data. They're not interested in the final result of the processing. So let's provide some examples. And the key ones here are what we refer to as software as a service. So software as a service are generally your cloud-based platforms. So think about your information management systems. Think about Arbor, SIMS, ScholarPack, whichever one you're using. CPOMs, my concern, your safeguarding systems, and all your array of learning platforms. If they're all hosted in the cloud, that's meant to be a cloud. Let's have some sun poking through. Any system that's hosted in the cloud, well, the provider of that system is generally going to be a data processor. And if we think about why, it's the school's data that's being input into that system. And as it's being hosted in that system, it's being processed by the processor. But the school manipulates that data. The school tells the data processor what data should be in there it might change it, modify it, extract it, and tells it when it needs to get rid of it as well. So your cloud-based systems are a key example of what a data processor is. So onto the second part then. If we're using cloud-based software we, and we're working with data processors, what do we need to do? Well, the key thing here is there has to be a binding contract in place between the parties. And this is a legal requirement under the GDPR. Under Article 28 of the GDPR, it states that there must be a binding contract in place if a controller, so if the school, is going to use a data processor. And that contract has to contain certain terms. It will cover things like data security. The processor has to give sufficient guarantees that it will protect the school's data. It will have to notify the school of data breaches. It will talk about if it wants to use subcontractors, how the school's consent will be sought first. And if we think about it, <clears throat> the reason for this is because as a data controller, the school is responsible for that data. Yet it's entrusting this third party to process that data on its behalf. So you want this organisation to be looking after that data, processing it legally, processing it securely as well. And that's why this contract is so important, because this processor is giving you these contractual promises to say that it will do those things. So, we've identified who a data processor might be, and then secondly, what's needed if you're going to be using a data processor. And just a final tip would be, if you are looking at using any third-party systems that process personal data, watch our video on data protection impact assessments, because a data protection impact assessment will help you identify whether you might be using a data processor or not.